If you were on the fence about EVs before, GM's latest decision just made your choice easier. Since the company decided to go all electric, the legacy automaker has been making headlines for all the wrong reasons. And unfortunately, it has done so once again. CEO Mary Barra's most recent announcement made it clear that General Motors is struggling to make and sell its EVs. The company is going into panic mode, and here are five indicators that GM can't sell EVs anymore. Number one, a move back to PHEVs. One of the main reasons GM supposedly stood out from other legacy automakers in the last five years was its decision to go all in on electric vehicles. While other legacy automakers weighed their options and attempted to ease into electrification, GM was hailed for its bravery and commitment to making the world a better place with its bold EV production and sales targets, all of which have gone kaput. But more on that later in this video. Meanwhile, companies like Toyota, who insisted that plug-in hybrids were the way to go, were mocked, bullied, and pressured for not going all electric. Well, that was so far back in the past that GM has now turned a corner. In one of her most recent announcements, Mary Barra told investors that the company will be changing its product lineup strategy to include plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, even though they still have EVs in them. Hybrids are not all electric. Hybrids are currently far more practical and cheaper than all electric vehicles. They have a higher market share than EVs right now, and it sounds like GM wants a share of the better pie. To save face, here's what Barra had to say on the matter. Let me be clear, GM remains committed to eliminating tailpipe emissions from our light-duty vehicles by 2035. But in the interim, destroying plug-in technology in strategic segments will deliver some of the environmental benefits of EVs as the nation continues to build its charging infrastructure. This sounds more like trying to ship blame away from her company and its many, many struggles with producing market-worthy EVs and pinning their drawbacks on a general problem that's been around since the dawn of EVs. One such problem is the next clear indicator that all is not well at General Motors, and that is the Altium disaster. Number 2. The Altium disaster For our viewers who do not know, Altium was GM's grand plan to rule the EV market. It was their solution for everything that was holding back EVs. From range anxiety to battery charging times, the Altium battery platform was meant to fix everything, and EV lovers were more than excited to see all that had been advertised come to life. The Altium was also great for GM's business as it was going to be flexible, easy to produce, and most importantly cheap to make. Sure enough, the first set of cars to pack this can-do all battery was released like the Hummer EV, Lyric, and Blazer EV. But, spoiler alert, the batteries weren't all they were touted to be. Firstly, the company struggled with producing Altium batteries. They weren't that easy to make or cheap, and GM's CFO Paul Jacobson reported that the company suffered a $1.7 billion loss thanks to the battery's production costs. But the problem didn't stop there. Since the release of the Hummer and Blazer EVs, owners have consistently complained of numerous issues plaguing cars on the Altium platform. Surprise, surprise, a lot of these problems are software related, something that GM has struggled to perfect since it got into electric vehicles. While these problems are sometimes unavoidable, expert car reviewers Edmunds reported that their Blazer EV had around 23 different issues after only using the car for two months, with problems ranging from charging issues, problems with the infotainment system, and almost every module in the car. If you thought these problems were only limited to Edmunds Blazer EV, you couldn't be more wrong. These software issues affected so many Blazer EVs that GM had to pause the sale of every Blazer EV as the software problems were rendering the cars unusable. While other cars like the Hummer EV and Lyric are still on sale, owners have complained of similar problems, and we can only imagine how long these cars would remain at the dealers before they can be used again. As if they didn't have enough software problems already, customers were surprised when GM announced the decision to drop support of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in their next generation vehicles. The growing problems with their holy grail battery and apparent software issues have put a lot of customers off, as more people question this legacy automaker's competence in manufacturing EVs. However, the most worried population is the auto dealers. Number 3. No deal with auto dealers while Biden and the White House have remained blind to the progress of EVs, many auto dealers remain skeptical about the EV revolution, and many of them refusing to take on the sales of EVs amid federal pressure. The reality is not that many people are into EVs yet, and they require extra effort to sell for pretty much the same commission. There's also the fact that auto dealers need to invest a whole lot more just to be eligible to sell these slow-moving EVs. 
There's the cost of training sales staff to market EVs better, safety training for working with higher voltage, and all the risks lithium-ion batteries come with plus the infrastructural upgrades EVs require. However, the biggest challenge for auto dealers will be passing up on the better profit margins ICE vehicles come with. Unlike EVs, gas-powered cars have more moving parts and need more maintenance compared to EVs that have lesser moving parts, long battery warranties, and require almost no maintenance at all. To many dealers, selling EVs is passing up on all the extra cash that ICEs bring. It's no surprise that they were the ones that suggested GM focused more on manufacturing hybrids than EVs. Number 4. Financial Indicators There's no clearer indication of a company struggling than a reduction in its sales targets. It's clear that the demand for EVs is not growing at the pace most electric automakers and analysts predicted. And GM has changed its once lofty sales and production goals to account for the lower than expected demand. The company initially planned to produce between 250,000 to 300,000 in 2024, but has reduced that number by a whopping 50,000. Even then, selling the new target of 200,000 to 250,000 would be applaudable for a company that sold only around 76,000 EVs last year. In a bid to improve its sales numbers and register profits, GM has gone over and beyond to incentivize EVs and put its cars in front of as many people as possible. One such case is their latest partnership with retail giant Costco. Costco Auto, a service provided by the wholesale retailer, does not sell vehicles directly. Instead, it functions as a partner or intermediary for franchise dealers and manufacturers, including GM. This partnership allows Costco members to access special vehicle pricing through discounts and other incentives. While it is desperate to say the least, the partnership targets a demographic that has not embraced EVs since their inception. It's well known that the retail giant appeals to individuals between 42 to 60 years of age. And while it may look like an untapped market, it remains to be seen if they can be convinced to buy over-engineered and complicated computers on wheels. Number 5. Strong Competition the fifth and final nail in GM's EV coffin is the ever-growing competition in the EV market. While many predicted that GM would quickly become a top player in the EV market and even topple Tesla, that has yet to happen. The opposite might be the case as current sales numbers indicate that it is straying further away from the top spot. Thanks to its cheap and reliable Ionic 5 and a slew of other vehicles, Hyundai Motor Group came second to Tesla but beat both Ford and GM in EV sales in the United States. Hyundai opted to concentrate on producing smaller, more affordable electric vehicles for the U.S. market, which is exactly what American consumers looking to switch to electric vehicles were looking for. GM, on the other hand, went in the opposite direction and suffered the consequences. It looks like GM is well out of its depth with EVs, but remains adamant and heady. Only time will tell what will become of GM as it continues to lose billions trying to make vehicles that people are abandoning in junkyards. Why are EV owners abandoning their barely damaged vehicles in junkyards? Find out in this next video.